Okay guys, do you want a bigger squat? Today I am going to teach you how to wrap your knees like a pro. I'm going to show you the techniques that I used to squat 415 kilograms, that's 915 pounds, in competition. I'm also going to take you through what wraps are available on the market, what would be best for you when to implement knee wraps in your training, and of course, how tight should you be wrapping your knees. Let's get this. Just because you can handle heavier weights with knee wraps doesn't mean you're going to be able to unless your technique is sound. Now that is one of the biggest misconceptions and problems that I see is that people just think, oh, if I put knee wraps on, I could squat 30, 40 kilos more too. Absolutely not. It is a skill. You have to practice it and you have to be sound with it. Tie it off with the last one. We reach under, we create space, and then we just simply push under and pull through. Okay, so that's six revolutions. That's seven revolutions. And welcome back to your mum's favorite channel on YouTube, Colt Strength. Now today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how to wrap your knees like a pro to help you build a massive squat. So this will, you know, kind of roll on from my tutorial I did a couple of days ago, how to increase your squat instantly, okay? Now, to be more specific today, I'm gonna to teach you quite a lot about knee wraps. I'm gonna go over the different kinds of knee wraps on the market and uh, what might be better suited for you. I'm obviously gonna show you what technique I use to wrap my knees effectively. And we'll go over, you know, are you ready to use knee wraps? Are you strong enough, you know, to justify using them and where to use them in your training cycle and for how long before competition perhaps and even how tight you should wrap your knees, right? We're gonna cover everything to do with knee wraps because, you know, they're one of the most useful tools you can use to build a big squat. If you're a competitive powerlifter, you know, most federations, uh, raw is with knee wraps. So most people that you will compete against will be wearing knee wraps, so you may as well wear them too, okay? You don't get extra bonus points if you compete against someone who's wearing knee wraps and you use knee sleeves, okay? You're not gonna get as much assistance out of them. Yes, you will get a little bit of assistance out of you know, some tight knee sleeves, but to be honest with you, if you can learn to wrap with the technique that I use, um, and let's be honest, if you can learn to wrap really tight, you can honestly get 35 to 40, even 50 kilograms out of knee wraps if you know how to use them properly. But it's a skill, okay? It's a skill, which is why it's important that I teach you and tell you you know, when you should implement it into your training so you can develop that skill so it pays off on the platform or when you do your max testing. All right, so we'll go over that now. Strap in, we're gonna have some fun. Let's get it, baby. All right, guys, now the first thing that we're gonna cover are the different types of knee wraps you'll find on the market and what, be, what would be better suited for you specifically because again, everybody's different, everybody's at a different level now there are definitely you know, wraps that I think that you should be uh, aiming to work towards. And when I say that, I mean that wraps can get fairly stiff, right? And fairly, so they're really supportive. They become like a cast, uh, but it does take some time to obviously get used to that. It's quite a painful experience at first for a lot of people. Um, and pushing down into the wraps to achieve depth in a squat can be very difficult when you have a very stiff cast knee wrap on your leg. So a lot of the times, uh, I recommend for a lot of people to start with a softer wrap in training because it's a skill, okay? And it's not about how tough you are. A lot of people carry on about, you know, you should just wrap super tight all the time, um, use a stiff knee wrap and stop complaining. That's all well and good and you can do that, all right? But at the end of the day, if you're dealing with immense pain whilst you're trying to learn a new technique with your squat because that's what it's gonna be. If you've not used knee wraps before, it's gonna feel like you're having to learn a new technique because the squat is slightly different. And the last thing you wanna do whilst you're trying to learn something new is obviously have a whole bunch of fucking pain going on which makes it harder to think about what you're doing. Okay, it really does. It makes the learning process a lot more difficult. So instead of just being hard headed, you're better off getting a softer knee wrap just for the first, you know, one to two months maybe until you actually get comfortable with the idea of what it is uh, and you build your tightness up with that softer knee wrap before progressing uh, to a stiffer knee wrap. But we'll have a look at a few wraps here. Now, 
this is uh, a Cerberus knee wrap. This is a, an entry level knee wrap, okay? It's, now, why is it entry level? A lot of the wraps look the same, you have to feel them, right? But this is a very thin, soft material, it's quite floppy. Um, it would be very comfortable and it's extremely stretchy, okay? It's extremely stretchy, meaning that because it's thin and it's soft and <laughs> stretchy, that's what she said, um, it's not gonna be all that supportive and it's probably not gonna do a fantastic job to help you squat heavy. In saying that, there's a time and a place, right? So this, as it says, it's an entry level knee wrap. So this wouldn't be a bad idea. It's uh, when you go to a, you know, uh, whatever brand of knee wrap you wanna buy, uh, they'll generally have uh, levels on their knee wraps. It might, they might use different words like uh, elite or professional or super stiff, uh, you know, for their top end wraps. And they're generally a little more expensive. Um, that doesn't always mean they're the best though, okay? And then if you go down the list, you'll see they're more entry level training wraps that are a little cheaper, okay? So it um, doesn't really matter what brand of knee wrap you buy in a sense. I mean, small details matter, but they're all gonna have a similar range, if you know what I mean. So entry level training wrap, you know, that could be good for somebody um, who's relatively, uh, you know, new to squatting, obviously new to squatting and knee wraps, but also someone who doesn't have a super high level of strength, right? So if you're, you know, already squatting 250 kilos in sleeves, uh, this might be probably uh, not what you're looking for. You might want to start somewhere in intermediate level. Okay, so we have an example of an intermediate level knee wrap. Uh, this brand is Loaded Lifting Link. This wrap's been around for quite a while. Um, and I'll quickly add as well, knee wraps are available in different lengths. Uh, you have two meter knee wraps, two and a half meters, and three meter knee wraps. Now, the majority of federations, um, they're gonna say two and a half meter knee wraps is the longest wrap you can use. I believe there are some federations that allow you to use three meters, but there's not many. Um, and if you can use two and a half meters in competition, there's no point buying a two meter knee wrap. Um, because you're selling yourself short. The more revolutions you can get, potentially the more you can get out of your squat. So I do recommend a two and a half meter knee wrap, but as I was saying, an intermediate level knee wrap. So, you know, there's no real um, strict guideline in terms of what dictates what is an entry level, medium level, or a, or a high level knee wrap. But again, it's more of a feel thing. So this one, it's a little bit thicker than this material right on this one, um, but it is a little stiffer than the material. Now it's not super stiff, it's still relatively thin, okay, and, and it's quite stretchy as, as well. All right, you can still see it's quite stretchy um, and not super stiff, but there is an added level of stiffness, you know what I'm talking about, um, compared to the training wrap. So, you know, entry level, uh, me, sorry, medium level uh, knee wrap would be good for most people. You know, I'd suggest that most people um, start with somewhat of a a medium level knee wrap. I think that is a good rule. Now, in terms of pro, elite, super stiff, stiff knee wraps, um, I will say this, stiffer isn't better. Okay, you might disagree, all the mums watching, but with knee wraps, stiffer isn't necessarily better. Okay, now if it's too stiff, you're not gonna be able to get enough revolutions, meaning, you know, wraps around the knee. And it's very hard to push into to get rebound. They almost just stop you dead, okay? So you get more of a canvas-like wrap and they tend to stop you dead and they don't give you the desired rebound effect. So stiffer, that's what I mean, stiffer wraps aren't always better. Now, I would say that this knee wrap here is a pro-level knee wrap. This is a knee wrap that I've used to squat 400 kilos plus multiple times, okay? But it's not super stiff. It's not ridiculously stiff but it is a step up from the medium level. But at the same time, you know, uh, someone who's relatively new to knee, to knee wraps, someone who would be in the market for a, for a medium level knee wrap could still use this. It might take a little bit of time to get used to and break it in, uh, but this is, to me, a perfect knee wrap. Now, <laughs> this might sound biased, but this knee wrap is one that I produced um, about four or five years ago. It's called the Death Grip. Now, bias of me to say this is my favorite knee wrap in the world. Well, to be honest with you, I had it made exactly to my specifications. So I picked a combination of the two favorite wraps that I liked and I asked them to put something together uh, to make it in between. So I asked for essentially it to be blended with a medium level wrap and a stiff level wrap. So I got something in between 
And for me, that was ideal. Okay, so what I believe to be the ideal wrap um, would give you a good amount of support and stopping power, as in that cast-like feeling, but still enough stretch to give you some rebound out of the hole when you're squatting with a knee wrap. Okay, so this one here is a little thicker. Now, it's probably very hard to see the thickness of it, as again, it's a feel kind of thing, but it is nowhere near as floppy as the other two wraps. It's a lot more rigid and hard. Yes, and that is why it can definitely help you squat more weight, okay? Um, again, this is the knee wrap that I use to squat 400 kilos plus multiple times, and it is still quite stretchy, but even when you stretch it, uh, it remains pretty dense still, okay? With the other ones, when you stretch them out, they become really, really thin. Whereas this one does keep a bit of thickness to it, which does give you a nice bit of support behind the knee. Obviously, after doing several revolutions, uh, that is very helpful when it comes to a squat. So, they're the kinds of different wraps on the market. As I, as I said, there's so many different brands out there. I'm not gonna sit here and recommend that you buy one particular one. Um, it is definitely a trial and error thing, but I will definitely say that in the coming months, I'm looking to release a new line of knee wraps, knee sleeves, you know, training wraps and training equipment, um, which will be made to my specifications. And I will guarantee you they will be made to the specifications being the best in the fucking world. All right, I'm gonna use a combination of products that I think work the best and create a fucking super beast. That's what's up. We'll take a minute and we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about you know, implementing these knee wraps in your training. Let's get it. All right guys, now that that is covered and you have some idea perhaps of what wrap you should be using, I'm gonna tell you when you should implement them in your training and let's say roughly what numbers your squat should be at before you consider using them. Now, we'll talk about the ladder first, okay? You know, where do we have to be strength-wise to justify using a knee wrap? This is very broad, very general, because there is such a broad range of people lifting weights. You have 150 kilogram dudes squatting 400 kilos, and you have 45 kilogram women squatting 60 kilos, and you have 60 kilogram men squatting 120 kilos, right? It's so broad and so general. So it has to be very relative to an individual. Now, a rule that I have in my gym, it's a general rule, it's sort of hard and fast rule, but a general rule that I have in my gym is when a man can squat 140 kilograms in knee sleeves, you know, with good technique, they're essentially graduating into knee wraps, okay? Now, for women, I generally have a rule of 100 kilograms, a good technically sound squat at 100 kilograms in knee sleeves for a woman before they progress onto knee wraps. Now, that can change a little bit, obviously, depending on body weight, right? Um, so that's just a general rule. Now, most people are strong enough for knee wraps, okay? Most people watching this channel probably have, you know, a 140 kilogram squat, okay? If you don't, it's not the end of the world, all right? We can get stronger, and it doesn't mean you can't use them. These are just a general recommendation. Now, a good time to implement these, if you're wondering if, you know, it's a good time, it would be simply that. Ask yourself the question, do you want to increase your squat, all right? Do you want to have the biggest squat possible? The answer is yes. Then you're going to want to implement knee wraps. Now, you might ask yourself, I don't compete in powerlifting. Do I need to use them? No, you don't need to use them. Of course not. The question is, do you want to have the biggest squat possible? The answer is yes. Again, we come back to use the fucking knee wraps, okay? Does your ego tell you that it's cheating if you use knee wraps? Well, if it tells you that, it's a liar, okay? As I said, most powerlifting is done with knee wraps. I believe one of the first competitions ever done was done with knee wraps and that was considered raw, you know, and most federations consider knee wraps raw or raw plus, okay? It's still considered raw powerlifting. Equipped powerlifting is when we start putting on the, the multi, you know, layered canvas suits and things like that. So, you know, the rule of thumb is just, if you want a bigger fucking squat, implement and use the tools available to do that. That goes with anything, with any piece of equipment, right? Belts, sleeves, knee wraps. So, you know, I think it's pretty straightforward for you. There is no perfect time to implement knee wraps, but if your goal is to get a bigger squat, you are feeling that you're pretty technically sound, right? I'm not saying that if you squat 140 in your technique shit house, you should put knee wraps on, no, because as I said earlier, squatting in knee wraps is an added level of difficulty. Yes, it can make you stronger, but it's also going to make the squat more difficult technically. There's a lot more to think about, 
and it's allowing you to essentially handle heavier weights, heavier weights than perhaps just your legs could naturally. So then there's the factor of we're going to have to really, really focus on the upper back bracing as I spoke about in the tutorial video. So just because you can handle heavier weights with knee wraps doesn't mean you're going to be able to unless your technique is sound. Now that is one of the biggest misconceptions and problems that I see is that people just think, oh, if I put knee wraps on, I could squat 30, 40 kilos more too. Absolutely not. It is a skill. You have to practice it and you have to be sound with it. Okay. So get that shit out of your fucking head. Um, and that's where the ego needs to be dropped in a sense is that you need to be okay. Am I technically sound? No. Well, I'm going to make this squat look real pretty and then I'm going to add a knee wrap. So it's not always like a, a number thing. The technique should be sound because it's not going to get better once you put knee wraps on magically. It's going to be harder to fix because you're handling heavier weights. I hope that makes sense. Now let's talk about how exactly to implement these in your training session or your program as in timing because timing is very important. Now let's say we've made the decision, we're going to use knee wraps, all right, fuck it, I got my knee wraps, now how do I do this properly? Are you a competitive powerlifter? Let's ask that question. Okay, let's say you're uh, prepping for a competition and it's 16 weeks away. Let's say you're not a competitive powerlifter but you want to use knee wraps, Let's set a max testing date of 16 weeks away. We'll keep the rules the same, okay? Now, in a 16-week training cycle, for me personally, I'd be using knee wraps for at least 12 weeks of that. So you've got a training cycle. Uh, let's say you start with the first four weeks. You might stay in sleeves, okay? And you will build into your knee wraps. Now, I wouldn't recommend using knee wraps for less than, less than 12 weeks. You know, some people might say eight to 10, but let's be honest. We really need to develop this skill and this skill needs practice. It's not easy, okay? This isn't an easy thing to learn to do. We need to be on point, okay? So the more time that we have to practice these techniques, the better your result is gonna be on the platform. So allow yourself, I would say, 12 weeks of practicing knee wraps each squat session before competition. Now you can also run it for 16 weeks, okay? That's also not a bad idea, but I would say the more advanced you are, the longer you would wanna run the knee wrap. The, if you're more of an intermediate to beginner, you can definitely get away with, you know, closer to the 12 week mark. But for myself, it's generally somewhere closer to 16 weeks that I'm implementing knee wraps because, you know, again, my squat frequency may not be uh, as, as often as yours. I may not squat once every week. It might be every eight to nine days. So in the end, I'm still getting roughly the amount of sessions you are, um, but I really do need to be dialed in because, you know, squatting heavier weights does require more focus, more attention to detail and more practice, okay? How do, you know, strong people, how do big squatters get really good at squatting? Yes, there's a certain level of natural strength, but it's taken them a lot of practice, you know, with the knee wraps, with the tools, not just squatting aimlessly, okay? This is all part of a big plan, and we do have to utilize everything that's available to us if we want to compete against people that are going to be doing the same thing, right? Because if you think they're cutting corners, you know, you might be surprised to find that they're not on comp day, so that doesn't mean you can cut corners either. So you need to make sure you're doing everything available to you and assume that they're doing the same. You know, you don't want to be mismatched and you don't want to be outworked. You also don't want to just be fucking lazy, all right? And that's kind of part of it. It's, uh, it's definitely a process and learning reps can be frustrating, uh, but it's definitely worthwhile, 100%. 100% worthwhile. Now, in your training sessions, you know, that's obviously we've just addressed when to start it in your program. So we say 12 to 16 weeks out. But in your training sessions, when do you put the knee wraps on? Okay, do you put the knee wraps on for your top set only? Do you put them on for your final warm-up and then your top set? Or do you do all of your warm-ups with knee wraps? Um, this one, again, specific to the individual, depending on each person, their amount of warm-ups may vary. You know, I have a lot of warm-ups if I'm squatting heavy, right? I have to go through more weights. So I have more opportunities to perform warm-up sets versus someone who maybe squats 140, you know what I'm saying? Um, but for me, right, I'll, let's, let's just use a, a mid-range number as an example. Let's say someone's a 220 kilogram squatter for one rep in knee wraps. And let's say they're working um, up to a new one rep max. They're going to aim for 230 kilos, okay? Just for argument's sake. How would I implement the reps in a training session? And keep in mind that just because they're working up to a one rep max in this hypothetical situation, 
the rules don't change in how you implement the wraps. This stays the same through every single session. It's routine and it's consistency. Okay, so we work backwards, okay? 2.30 is their final attempt, meaning that your last warm-up's gonna be at about 210 kilos. You're wrapping your last warm-up, you're wrapping your top set. Now, let's go back, say, they're gonna go 210, we'll go back to 180. Okay, so they're gonna wrap 180 as well, and they might wrap 150. So I'd probably start wrapping 150, 180, 210, 230. Okay, so you've got three warm-up knee wraps and one working set knee wrap. Um, you know, and you could potentially wrap earlier sets. You could wrap 130 or 120, um, but that would be very specific to you. Now, someone who's a little bit stronger, let's say I'll use myself as an example if I'm working up to a, a 350 kilogram squat, okay? I'm gonna put my knee wraps on from generally 180 to 200 kilos, okay? So just over 50% of my, of my working weight for the day, I'm putting my knee wraps on. I'm gonna give myself four or five opportunities four or five warm-up sets to really nail that technique. As I said, I'm not just gonna go through all my warm-ups in sleeves and then put knee wraps on right before my working set and expect to be able to utilize them in the way that I should be able to. It's a skill, and just because you're good at it doesn't mean you don't have to do it. You have to keep doing it to maintain that skill level because the feeling of it is so very different. You know, when I'm squatting with knee sleeves and when I'm squatting with a knee wrap, my technique is slightly different as I said before. In the next session that I do in knee sleeves, you know, I'll talk you through that, but that's not the purpose of today's video. But it is very different and you need to allow, obviously, for yourself to become comfortable with that sensation around the knees um, and just the, the feeling in general, okay? Keeping in mind, you can also handle heavier weights when you have knee wraps on. So just because you are doing, let's say, a 230 kilogram max and you plan on doing 210 as your last warm up that 210 in sleeves could be more than your max in sleeves. You know what I mean? So you're already hitting a max before a max. You wanna make your warm-ups as easy as possible. As easy as possible. All right, now finally, I'm gonna show you the techniques that I use and I'm also gonna to explain to you how tight you should wrap your knees, obviously based on your experience level, okay? And, and how long you've been doing this or the weight that you're lifting. So firstly, how tight should they be? Well. I've spoken about this in some of my previous squat sessions and it's that your warm-ups, you need to start with a, with a, you know, a wrap that's not as tight, okay? So let's say I'm doing four warm-ups in knee wraps before my top set. My first warm-up in knee wraps, I would wrap with five revolutions, meaning five wraps around the knee, okay? My second warm-up, I would do six revolutions. My third warm-up, I would do seven revolutions. Now my final warm-up, I would make that almost just as tight as my top set so I get an idea of what that's going to feel like. And I'd wrap an eight revolutions, okay? That's a fairly tight wrap. With this knee wrap in particular, eight revolutions is quite tight. Now for my working set, I probably wouldn't get nine revolutions, especially if I'm just wrapping myself because wrapping yourself is a little more difficult than having someone wrap for you. But I would do what I would call an eight and a half, which is where I would max out eight revolutions, get as close to nine as I can, and it would feel probably 5% tighter than just a normal eight, eight revolutions, which does make a big difference. So I'm not saying you have to wrap up to eight revolutions for your top set at first. There's no way in the world you'd probably be able to handle that. It would be quite shocking, to be honest with you. If you've never had your knee wrapped really tight just for fun, um, I recommend that you probably don't do it, but if you're gonna do it, you'll see what I mean, okay? It's not very pleasant. And then imagine having a big weight on your back trying to squat down with it. It's not fun. So what I'm saying is that you might do your first wrap with four revolutions, your second one with five revolutions, and then you might stick with six revolutions for the rest of your training session until you've developed a pain tolerance and a threshold um, before you, and also until you feel comfortable with the technique, right? Because that's what makes it hard. The tighter the knee wrap is, it can throw your technique out. You have to be very sound with your technique. As I said before, you start with knee wrap. So make sure with your early warm-ups, with the lighter knee wraps, you're really focusing on technique because as I said, it's not gonna get easier when the weight gets heavier. It's gonna become a lot harder. So be mindful of that, okay? Be mindful of that. Uh, but now I'm gonna show you how I like to wrap knees. There are many different techniques, but I'm gonna show you the best technique. It is extremely simple and it is used by multiple people that squat 400 kilos plus, some of the best squatters in the world, okay? Um, one thing to note, wrap in, to out, we wanna wrap outwards around, we wanna push the knee out. A lot of people will say it doesn't matter. 
I beg to differ. I think it does matter slightly. We are trying to externally rotate, you know, our our right or both of our legs, you know, from the ground up. So if our if we're trying to drive out externally, but our knees wrapped internally, it can feel very funny. So I do like to wrap into out. Okay. So let's have a look at this, right? What we want to focus on is we want to lock our knee when we're wrapping our knees. We want to pull our toe back towards ourselves. So this is nice and stable, okay? We don't want a floppy knee. We don't want our kneecap being able to move around because we're going to be pulling across the kneecap. Now, in terms of where we start our, we start our wrap, I like to start just below. So you've got the soft part in the middle of your knee here, right? I put the beginning, like the, the wrap there, so it's covering that bottom half of my knee and the soft part. Okay, and I'm going to wrap in to out. So wrapping outwards, one revolution. So we wrap straight around and we're going to come up three layers. Okay, you can do three or four and I'll explain the difference after. So we're going to cover half the knee wrap with the wrap. And we're going to cover at last the top of the kneecap with the knee wrap. So my kneecap is completely covered here, okay? And this wrap has come up one half each time. You can see I'm using it as a marker. So I've done three up. Now what I'm gonna do is a diagonal cross down, okay? A diagonal cross back up. That's five revolutions. For this, we'll just do six revolutions. To finish them off, what we do is we come back around the top of the knee here, okay? If I was gonna continue making this wrap tighter, I would just go again, back down the knee. Okay, so I went one, two, three up, cross, and then I would go one, two, three down. Now this is just kind of a warm up weight, so I wouldn't do that, right? This is six revolutions. Now to tie it off, okay, let's say you've got your last one. So you've got six revolutions, you're pulling it across. What you wanna do, you wanna reach under with your other hand, then with this hand, create some, some, some space here, which you're gonna pull the knee wrap under and then through so you can lock it off. A lot of people struggle with the lock off. It's very simple. You just need to create space for the knee wrap, okay? That's six revolutions on the right knee. Just for demonstration's sake, I'll wrap seven revolutions on my left knee just with a different knee wrap, okay? So again, this time I'm gonna use the four revolutions up. So you kind of have a choice. For me, it doesn't make a huge difference. You just wanna make sure you have good coverage. So this time it's four revolutions up. They cross over a little less than half, right? Three, so I'm just using the white line as a guide. Most knee wraps will have some sort of a guide. So you can see there, nice and even, very satisfying, okay? Four revolutions. There's six, and then we tie it off with the last one. We reach under, we create space, and then we just simply push under and pull through. Okay, so that's six revolutions. That's seven revolutions. Um, and that's the technique that I use. We wrap in to out. I'm not gonna do a squat with them right now, but there you go. Uh, if you have any questions in regards to this, you know, please ask, keep in mind, there's many different techniques I find this to be the best and the simplest to do, which is helpful. All right, guys, so we'll just quickly summarize that. Now, obviously, we went over which knee wraps to use, what are the best ones for you. Hopefully, you have a clearer idea of what you should be using. And as I said, I have a new range coming out soon, fingers crossed, so keep your eyes out for that. Um, when to implement it in your training, you know, obviously, I gave you the base guidelines of you know, when I think would be a good time for you to do that. But keeping in mind that, you know, being sound technically is probably more important than the load you're squatting. Okay, so if you're a big squatter, it doesn't necessarily mean you're ready for knee wraps unless you're technically sound. Because as I say, it's not going to make your squat any easier. And then, of course, when to implement it, you know, how far out of competition or obviously max testing, uh, how many warm-ups into your session should you use them, how tight should they be, and the technique that I use, very simple. Um, straight up spiral with the cross and the spiral down. It works amazingly. It's very easy to do yourself. You can even wrap others that way very easily and uh, spread that knowledge. But, you know, as I said, 
if you're keen on building a big squat, using a knee wrap is definitely something you should implement. It's guaranteed to give you a bigger squat, provided you have sound technique and you can keep working on that technique getting better and better. Because the more that you use a knee wrap and the better you get with a knee wrap, the more you're going to squat. Okay, the more you're going to squat, simple as that. So I hope that it helps. I hope that you can take you know, something away from this uh, to the gym whilst you're working on your squats. Maybe you've been thinking about using knee wraps for a little while now and uh, you know, maybe you think now is the time. So I definitely you know, encourage you to look into it, to give it a try, uh, because you know, this whole thing is about getting bigger and getting stronger and it's always good to implement tools that can be useful to help us achieve these things. Okay, it'd be silly not to. Um, yeah, anything else? I don't think of anything else. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you drop a comment. Make sure you subscribe. I have my Patreon, all exclusive content, uh, mindset, mentality based, sharpening your mental tools to help you with your daily endeavors and goals. Of course, thank you to all uh, the people who have signed up to my membership tier here on YouTube as well. It's quite a few of you now, so I appreciate that. It allows me to keep making this content and I'll be back tomorrow, obviously, to film something else. I'm not even fucking sure what it's going to be yet. I just come in here and I'm like, you know what I'm going to film today? That. And then I do it. Because I do make videos almost every day and uh, it's hard to come up with constant ideas. Sometimes you just got to feel it and go with it. So I do hope you appreciate it. And until next time, you know what to do. Go to the fucking gym.